What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night. It is July 30th, 2022. Got one more day before the August month coming up here. It's about 8.39 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows some activity. Looks like a 1.7 out here around the west coast in California. Uh, seeing a little bit of movement throughout the day today. Uh, in the earthquake department, uh, including a 5.1 and a couple of fives around the Java Trench. We're going to go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the fire situation real quick out in Northern California here, just north of me. I live down here around Chico. Uh, luckily, uh, we don't have any major fires out to the east of us or the west of us yet, but we did have a significant amount of thunderstorm activity pop up throughout the Northern California mountain ranges today, uh, sparking up quite a few new fires. Uh, so far, uh, the biggest one, kind of one that's uh, making the news right now is the McKinley fire. This is probably just an estimate right now. I'm sure it's doubled in size, uh, only 29,000 acres. I'm sure it's at least 60,000 right now. We'll wait for the latest update. Uh, they are evacuating the city or town of Eureka right now. Uh, the fire is actually getting pretty darn close. I want to show you guys real quick the radar imagery. Let me uh, bring that up here real quick and show you guys. Stand by for just a second. So here's the radar imagery. I'm going to put this thing into motion, and you're going to see some storms uh, pop up from the basically from the south and work their way north. The only thing these thunderstorms did is enhance this area around Wairika uh, as far as the fire goes, basically fanning the fire so to speak so watch this as we uh, put this into motion look at Eureka right here storms coming up from the south the fire is just to the west of Eureka uh, and you'll see it basically stabilize and then really take off like right there this big huge spot let me go up here go to the last image this is the fire area folks this is not a thunderstorm uh, basically what happened here is the thunderstorms formed from the south uh, work their way up north and fueled this major fire significantly. The town of Eureka is under a mandatory evacuation order right now. That's why Eureka right here. Uh, Interstate 5, areas west of Interstate 5 as well. So this fire definitely has a big, huge potential growth right now, as we've seen on the map, on the radar. Uh, it is going to be working its way towards the K-Max uh, <laughs> radar station, and that sucks because I use that station quite a bit when I'm storm chasing up north. Uh, but we're looking at areas, of, a lot of mountainous areas up here, a lot of trees. I know this area has had some fires in the past, but there's a lot of uh, new growth, and uh, a lot of it's still dry. There's a lot of dry uh, timber and brush up there that ne that's probably going to burn. So this fire has a major capability of turning into something monstrous and uh, like I said this 29,000 acre uh, number is an estimate that was actually put out earlier this morning uh, and I'm sure it's doubled in size right now as you can see the uh, fire line I want to show you guys the zoom earth view okay this is kind of like a overview of some hot spots now not every hot spot on the map here is a fire uh, but definitely up here in the Wairika area this is hot spot activity, and this is where the fire is at. This is not moderate rain. Uh, the radar is picking it up like a, like a thunderstorm or a, like a rain uh, event going on. But all this activity right here is all the smoke from all this fire working its way north, north, uh, basically northward, a little bit northeastward, and uh, it's it's a it's a big one. It looks like only one percent contained, at least according to the Zoom Earth folks. The town of Wairika, again, is under mandatory evacuation, uh, and that's not good, folks. It's I, I was hoping, I was really hoping we wouldn't have a significant fire year this year in California, but man, storms are popping up all over the place, uh, and it's looking active tomorrow as well, more active. Uh, notice here along the west coast, uh, in the coastal ranges, I'm not seeing any heat signatures pop up here. Um, let me go back here and see if there's any been uh, been any fires listed. It looks like a little one out here in the uh, ch this is a China fire. It looks like one acre, not that big of a deal. Uh, but you can tell that's definitely uh, started from lightning out there. 
where is yeah i gotta show you guys this this is really cool looking but also really scary i want to show you this this is earlier today on the mckinley fire this is looking west this is interstate five right here look at these pyrocumulus clouds building up huge pyrocumulus events watch this really take off it really gets going watch guys these are not thunderstorms these are heat induced clouds pyrocumulus clouds is what they are called and there was a bunch of them a lot of timber up there burning and uh watch the smoke watch the smoke come to the camera that's scary folks that is pretty darn scary so that was a little time lapse earlier today between about noon and uh about three o'clock or so um yeah th this is not good for uh the state of california there's not going to be nothing left there's not going to be anything left when it comes to the, uh, the beautiful scenery out here uh, in california so we got the mckinley fire here is the fire perimeter uh, areas that have been burned but this has not been updated yet um this let me see when the last update was looks like uh choo -choo -choo, back back around uh, 241 yeah so it hasn't been updated far as this map goes the evacuation zones according to the siskiyou county sheriff's department uh the wairika area is now under a mandatory evacuation area so uh, again interstate five right here it still is open i believe um might want to check with caltrans though and see uh if, if there's been any road closures i don't believe there has but uh man it's it's brushing up right against here and uh, if it makes its way into Oregon area, right around Ashland, there's a lot of heavily forested regions here. And Ashland could be in the mix there of being uh, a target. Uh, it's, I know there's a lot of mountainous range and uh, wooded areas, but holy smokes, man. Hopefully it doesn't go uh, that far. 1% containment. Again, these thunderstorms are fueling the fire with these heavy wind events going on. So not good whatsoever folks uh here's the latest activity here from the volcano discovery site i know we were looking at some earthquake activity up here around iceland earlier throughout the day today <coughs> excuse me but i'm not seeing anything updated here far as um volcanoes throughout the iceland region i want to show you guys the emsc model here and we'll take a look at some earthquake activity ramping up Throughout the day in the Iceland region, it's kind of happening up here, folks, way up there. So we'll have to click on this area on the EMSC model. And uh, as you can see, there's a pretty good swarm, including some activity within the last hour. It looks like a 3.2 or so. At Look at that number. 333, folks. What's going on? If you guys watch my videos, that's a pretty significant number for me. 333 pops up a lot. Unfortunately, it didn't help me win the Mega Millions, but that's okay. Uh, 4.3 latest earthquake down here around the uh, Mediterranean area it looks like but uh, yeah there's definitely a good swarm of activity around the Iceland region looks like quite a few twos and threes pretty shallow depths there around five kilometers or so um, so we'll watch the area for uh, potential volcanic activity right now though nothing's showing up far as the Iceland volcanoes go all right let's go back to the USGS map here Looking at the United States and the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Not a whole lot, right? Uh, at least around the Fiji Islands area or the, the um, Papua New Guinea area, Solomon Islands. Over the last hour, we have seen a 5.1 in the Indonesia area. Northern end of the Java Trench at about 78 kilometers deep. Gotta watch this area. This thing's a bad boy. This thing will produce some mega quakes. Uh, and also over here where I mentioned around the Mediterranean area with a 4.3 in Greece. Not showing anything up here on the Iceland uh, areas for earthquakes because, I don't know, USGS is taking it easy on the weekend, I suppose. They're not even showing the fours up there. Uh, down here in the South Sandwich Islands area did see a, a 5.1 at about 35 kilometers. So a little bit of deeper movement here into the subduction zone. A trail of earthquake activity from about Nicaragua, uh, Nicaragua down south uh, around the uh, uh, Cocos Plate here, it looks like, just offshore in the Central America region of 4.3. Let's bring up the, uh, well, let's hold on a second here. 
This is 2.5 and above. I'm trying to see if we've seen anything earlier today. Looks like the latest quake was uh, 2.5 in Nevada out around the Tonopah area. Let's bring back the all magnitudes map here. Of course, way up in Wyoming, earlier this morning, we did have a 3.0. We'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, as far as activity goes in California, yeah, a little spotty. Not a whole lot going on. Little, little connected dots here. But uh, overall, no major seismic swarms, no major seismic activity that I can note here throughout the western portion of the United States. It looks pretty calm for the most part, uh, aside from the typical microquake activity in a major plate boundary such as the uh, west coast. So there's a the three-pointer that kicked up there earlier this morning. It did spark off a couple other smaller earthquakes at Yellowstone National Park, but since then, notice the die-off of activity. Uh, looks like only a couple small microquakes throughout the region uh, since then. No major uh, unrest or movement noted throughout the rest of the park. Uh, just a little activity up there in Yellowstone. So sometimes these swarms, they come and go. I keep saying that because that's what they do. Sometimes they'll pop up and then they'll just completely disappear for months. And then they'll stick around for months. So just one of those, one of those things, folks. Uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, middle part of the country or eastern uh, states here. Some of this activity older, uh, some older movement. Alaska is getting in. Uh, looks like at least a couple earthquakes here outside of Anchorage and up here um, in the, uh, where is this at here? Looks like just outside of this area here where the circle is. What is that? Karluk? 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 A 3.4 at about 1.5 kilometers. But very typical, again, this is a major subduction zone, Pacific Plate, North American Plate interaction. Always gonna see earthquake activity here in a day. Doesn't matter, it's always gonna happen. Uh, Kurokam Chaka Trench has calmed down. Remember, we were having a little swarm about Tokyo southward here, uh, up north through the Kurokam Chaka Trench, but uh, that has calmed down. It looks like things have kind of come to a, a stuck position here. Uh, with with westward pressure increasing uh, in the areas here around Java Trench and also up here we've seen a 5.1 in the uh, Nepal area shaking things up out here uh, right around the Himalayas not for sure about the population area out, out here in the mountains but uh, yeah a little 5.1 shaking things up out there uh, let's see what we got for Hawaii real quick see if we got anything noteworthy to chat about uh, looking like a uh, typical day, Pahala region, a little bit quiet. We're seeing more migration of movement northward around the Kilauea volcano right here and the Mauna Loa, uh, including a uh, 1.8 way up top at the crater. Very shallow earthquake activity up there, but no major changes to note here at the region. Also out here around the Mauna Kea region at 2.6, 22 kilometers deep here. Trimmer map along the Cascadia subduction zone kind of spread out tonight from about uh, the Oregon region south into Northern California. Pretty good chunk of the uh, southern end of the Cascadia showing some movement tonight with 77 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, we'll check out the volcanic seismicity uh, map at, uh, what, let's choose Crater Lake tonight. Let's see what's going on here around the beautiful area of Crater Lake. Uh, we'll check out Wizard Island up here. See what we got for earthquake activity, if any. I haven't noted any at all throughout the uh, USGS, USGS area. Uh, look at that. It looks like a little bit of activity. I know it looks like the graphs are off there. Let me check the previous UTC time. And not for sure what this is. This kind of reminds me of something clicking on, running for, for an extended time, and then clicking off. You guys see that? So I can't be too sure of any type of activity that I'm reading here on this graph uh, as far as it being earthquake related. Let's check a little bit further south and see what's going on. Not for sure what's out there, but something clicked on and then turned off. That's kind of what it looks like to me. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That looks a little haywire. Come on, let's see Crater Lake Bunkhouse. Awesome. Doesn't look, to be honest, it doesn't look like a lot of earthquake activity out there. I know we're seeing some little blurps of uh, 
these little readings here and those are who knows what um, definitely not earthquake related not under the ground not uh, it's probably above the ground it could be generators coming on for a certain amount of time um, it, it's uh, it's hard to say when we see these equal size readings across the map here but definitely no earthquake activity I think we all know what earthquake activity looks like here so um, let's see what else do we have check out space weather events real quick um, I may be heading up to the McKinley fire here very soon to check out um, the activity around Wairika. So just stay tuned for that. Aside from earthquake activity, volcanic activity, space weather, uh, storm chasing, and um, volcano monitoring, we, we tend to monitor fires as well here on this channel. So we will be uh, keeping a close eye on the McKinley fire. And uh, again, I may be heading up there soon with Missy Mimi's. Uh, just a heads up only a 25 percent chance of a sea flare that is about the best you can do i, I guess so I, it's kind of low it's kind of low but look at the disc here look at the visible disc of the sun 3068 is about the only potential and even then it looks like it's kind of just fading away fading off in the sunset so to speak uh no major activity heading towards our region looks like maybe later tonight a three to four KP index of elevated um, geomagnetic unrest, but I, uh, it's hard to say. I don't see anything popping up here on the auroras right now. Uh, south or north regions look somewhat calm. So, all right, guys, stay safe out there. Um, I'm I'm kind of watching these thunderstorms popping up tomorrow here in California. I might go out storm chasing with Missy Mimi's and uh, watch for some fires. Uh, tomorrow's supposed to be a pretty active day. Let me show you guys real quick before I jump out of here. Let me go back to the, uh, let me go back, not to that one, not, no, 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 no. Go back to this one real quick and let me type in the Windy app. Windy is an awesome app. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Some free advertising there for those folks. Um, Okay, so we're looking at just wind. I want to show rain and thunderstorms. Thunderstorms right now have died off. Of course, monsoonal moisture is kicking their way up here into the southern part of the state, pushing northward. It's a pretty good flow of moisture coming up. Uh, but man, we don't need lightning strikes. Let me go to tomorrow, right around noontime, we start to see some development of thunderstorms up here in Northern California. And as we get later into the afternoon time frame, things really ramp up here right around the fire area. Uh, so we could have some new spot fires out here from some lightning strikes and also fanning the, the flames of the McKinley fire, so to speak. Uh, these thunderstorms do produce some gusty winds and that's not what we need to uh, combat the fire. Uh, but you notice here a lot of thunderstorm development throughout Northern California and that will extend uh, well into Monday as well. Let me show you guys Monday time frame. Uh, looks like about 2 p.m. here Monday a lot of thunderstorms up here potential uh, along that same area so man i feel bad for those folks but uh you know I, I i don't know i don't know what to say i just hopefully everyone's prepared uh and make sure you have a, a an evacuation plan because living in the mountains up there it's beautiful it's serene and it's safe I, i'm a mountain man i love living in the mountains but uh you know, you always have that potential here living in California of uh, wildfires. Look at this monsoon of moisture out here. A lot of potential thunderstorm activity throughout the Four Corners area, Nevada. Holy smokes, that's crazy. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat to you a little bit later on. Uh, until then, make sure you guys uh, take it easy. Enjoy life. Peace out, guys.